Good morning and welcome to my morning rant. This morning I want to talk to you guys about a couple of things, um, but just to encourage you about who God is and um, uh, let you know that the Father cares about you and I. He really does. I know many times you and I, we don't feel that way. Father um, is not moved by uh, feelings in the sense where it uh, changes how he feels about us, but the Bible is very clear how he feels about us. It tells us that and now uh, nothing will separate us from the love of God. It tells us that while we were yet sinners, that he died for us. The scripture goes on and on. It tells us that he's long-suffering. He's uh, full of mercy. Uh, he makes his grace available to us, uh, that um, he uh, uh, protects us, he covers us. Um, he does so much on behalf of his children. He translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. He gave us the Holy Spirit. He gave us Jesus Christ. He gave us faith. He gave us angels. He gave us all of these things. And um, I've said this to you guys before. I have studied uh, religion, different types of religion uh, in my life, and I haven't met a God from any religion, any religious sect, where the God that I serve, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and and my God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, I haven't read anywhere that uh, any of their God is uh, vested, invested in the in the individual person, in their individualness, in uh, as well as the um, the body together. He is uh, interested in us as an individual. The Bible tells us he knows um, the amount of hair that is on our head and all of these different things. He collects our tears. This is a God who is really, really, truly vested in what happens to you and how he cares about us. And uh, one of the things that uh, um, we hear about him is how we have to worship him. And it, it is so, I believe, by those that are following me. I believe that um, uh, heaven is incomplete, meaning that when Lucifer and uh, a third of the angels vacated their position in in the heavens, I believe they, that, um, and it tells us that the Bible tells us that it's an innumerable amount of them, but we know it was a third. And so I believe heaven is incomplete, and because heaven is incomplete, God is giving you and I an opportunity to choose to be a part of the heaven, heavens to be um, to make it complete. Those that by choice, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I believe that heaven being replenished, whosoever. And um, you and I get there by the pen that God has put together for us to get to him, replenish the heavens was vacated by the angels. And if you study the word, you know that uh, Lucifer was a, was controlling part of the worship. He, his responsibility was there. And that's why you see the Bible tells us, and uh, we see that people are constantly worshiping God, which is, um, uh, you read those scriptures all the time, where uh, people declare that, I will worship the Lord, I will, you know, rejoice in the Lord. And all of those scriptures, we see that it tells us that, and which we should, because, again, we are uh, replacing the worship aspect of the one, the third that was gone. That's my belief. But I, I could be wrong, but who knows? So we read scriptures, and we see people praising God and worshiping God. Um, uh, Acts 16.25, we saw Paul and Silas praising God and, and singing hymns to God and... and uh, prison uh, door open. We know that um, we're admonished in Ephesians 5, 19, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, sing and make music from our heart to the Lord. Uh, we know that these are all um, uh, a part of our responsibility is as being a part of this new kingdom that we are a part of. We see a lot of singing in this new kingdom. Not so much that people say there's no do's and don'ts, but there's a lot of rejoicing. Come, us, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Uh, we see these uh, scriptures all over about singing unto our God. But I wanted to let you guys know 
that um, God sings about you. And so I, I want to bring that to your attention, but I, I was just coming around and, and in this picture of who this God is, about his uh, ability um, uh, towards us, his love, his affection, desire, his long-suffering, his patience, his, his um, uh, uh, mercies. All of these things, as I started stated earlier, are a part of his character. He has done uh, much for us, but the Bible tells us that he sings, uh, uh, he rejoices over us. One of the saddest things I heard this weekend about um, the, about one of the famous uh, televangelists mentioning that um, uh, the reason why Jesus Christ hasn't come yet because we haven't given, the church haven't given money. And that was such a erroneous thing to say. Um, and it, it really doesn't show who our God is and what he's about. Um, Matthew 24, 36, Jesus makes a statement, but concerning that day and hour, no one knows, even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. It's not has to do with anything about you and I giving money, that uh, that's why Jesus hasn't come, because it's not the fullness of time yet. One operates in the fullness of time, and we read that scripture over and over and over again, uh, we see where God mentioned in the fullness of time. But I'm glad that uh, um, he hasn't come yet. He says, regard the patience of the Lord as an opportunity for salvation, Second Peter 3.15. So it tells me that God, all those folks out there, God wants to reach people and he's patient. Uh, Exodus 34, 6, and the Lord passed by in front of him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, passionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness and truth. Lord, slow to anger in uh, Numbers 14, 18, um, and abound, uh, uh, abundant in loving kindness, forgiving iniquities and transgression. He will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and to the third and fourth generation. Psalms 86, uh, 15. But you, O Lord, are a God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness and truth. And regards to the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him who wrote to you. These are scriptures I'm bringing to you and showing you. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, is patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. That is why Jesus come, not because of your money, not because of your giving. It is not the fullness of time. And so please don't let these men, uh, um, you know, up to your, your, to your guilt uh, to take away substance that God has given to you. Um, God will, our responsibility is to preach the gospel, preach the kingdom. It says preach the kingdom of God. Uh, 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 and then after we've preached the kingdom uh, to all the, the world, then will Jesus come. Maybe he has nothing to do with the money. Maybe they're not preaching the kingdom of God as the word states. And so it really broke my heart. But I wanted to bring that to you guys' attention so that you're not going to be swept up with all these crazy things that these men are doing. The Bible says that when we preach the kingdom of God to all the nations, then shall the Son of Man come. He didn't say because we were giving money, we didn't give money or whatever. He knows where to get it. The Bible tells us that there's going to be a wealth transfer that will take place. And those men, it tells us in the Ecclesiastic, all of them are working to, to, to gain the money and God will give it over to us. Not to spend and buy cars and all of those things. We have work to do. And you guys have heard me say to you before Isaiah 61, after Jesus finished, the rest of our work is mentioned within that scripture. And that's what that money is going to be used for. So don't let these men do this to you. But I want to take you back to our Father. I want to take you to a beautiful scripture in um, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. The Lord your God in your midst, mighty one who will save, he will Rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt you. He will exalt over you with loud singing. That 
is our Father. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the Holy Spirit having a party over you and I. So don't let the enemy keep you in bondage uh, with all kinds of thoughts because he does that to all of us. We are human and we do make mistakes. And what the Bible says, God is faithful enough. If we confess our sins, God is faithful enough to justify, to, uh, to just um, clean us up, um, make us clean before him, cleanse him. He will forgive us of all unrighteousness, the scripture says. He will make us justified, um, is what I was trying to say. So you and I are uh, just in his eyes. And because we have peace with God, as the scripture says, he rejoices over you and I. He really, truly does. And as I mentioned to you, I haven't met any or studied any other religion whereby their, the God is interested in, uh, the God of that religion is uh, worshiping uh, and singing on the behalf of his people, is saving them. The Lord your God is in the midst, in your midst. He's here with us. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In fact, he gave us the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit lives with us. In fact, he, when we died and uh, we became born again, it says that Christ, then he lives in us. And so this Lord, our God, is in our midst, mighty one who will save. He will save you in any and every situation that you are because he will receive the glory. He just needs you to believe. Believe and be saved, the scripture says. And when you believe, you will be saved. Whatever you're believing for, whether it's salvation, whatever it is you're asking for a job, you shall be saved. That's the progression. Even you shall be saved. It says that uh, he will rejoice over you with gladness. So here is our God rejoicing over you and I. Imagine that. Imagine the creator of ever, everything, the God of heaven and earth, the creator of all being. He is worshiping and rejoicing over you and I with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. Picture this, holding you in his arm, telling you he loves you, quieting your worries, quieting your fear, quieting all of your anxieties, quieting your doubt, quieting all of your shortcomings, quieting your spirit, your mind, your your mind running all over the place. He is going to quiet you by his love. And the Bible tells us he will exalt over you with loud singing. It just didn't say singing. He will um, exalt over you and I with loud singing singing. Imagine that picture. God is singing his heart out about you and I, singing his heart out about his children, his family, are just praising and you and I partaking. But imagine the picture of this beautiful uh, God and Father that we serve, this Lord Jesus Christ who did all of this for us, the Holy Spirit. Imagine that they are going to be rejoicing. Imagine See that beautiful picture of the God the Father. See that beautiful picture of Jesus Christ singing over you. See that picture of him where his love is um, quieting us, quieting all the things that we have within us. Imagine that, for it tells us in the scriptures, nothing will separate us from the love of God. Nothing, we read that to you guys in the previous podcast in Romans, nothing will be able to separate you and I from the love of God, and he exalt over us loud singing. I am excited, guys, and I just want to encourage you and uh, focus on Jesus. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes in the Word, uh, because there are going to be uh, people coming and uh, saying all kinds of crazy things to you. That's the reason why Jesus come, hasn't come, because you, you guys are not giving enough money. Um, but I want you to circle back. Keep your focus on, on the Lord. Worship Him. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Praise Him. Isaiah 42, uh, 10, Psalms 96, 1 talks about this. So you and I want to sing and sing with our God as He sings about us with a loud voice so that we can be a part of this kingdom, partying, having some good, good time. Because the Bible tells us that God sings over His people. And he rejoices over us. And he quiets us with his love. Allow him 
quiet you guys. For your situation that you're going through today, allow the Father, allow Jesus, allow the Holy Spirit to quiet you with his love so that you can uh, uh, joy and picture God uh, worshiping and singing with a loud voice on your behalf. Even where you are today, God is singing with a loud voice because you have chosen to be with him. You are a part of the whosoever. For God so loved the world that whosoever, you're a part of the whosoever. So uh, this God, he cares about you. He's long-suffering. We read why he hasn't come. He's long-suffering and he is kind towards us and he wants all of us uh, to turn to him. And he doesn't want a single soul not to be a part of his kingdom. He says, the Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing any to perish, but for all come to repent. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. You walk faith, not by sight.